Right now, I'm headed southbound to the southern Oregon coast to help out my brother upgrade his Mac Pro 5,1. It is a four core box and it has an old GeForce 1060. He bought a new CPU and new GPU so it can hopefully play much more modern games at 1080p. And yes, there will be benchmarks later in this video. This video is going to be kind of a short and sweet one. Recently, I did a $75 upgrade to a Mac Pro 3,1. But what happens if you increase that budget by, say, three times? Well, that just happens to be the budget of this upgrade, which is $225. My brother's Mac Pro is a single CPU quad core 2.8 gigahertz Xeon W3530 with 32 gigs of RAM and a hand-me-down GeForce 1060. For the Mac Pro geeks watching this, the CPU upgrade path is pretty obvious. That is a Xeon 5690, a 3.46 GHz 6 core CPU, so 50% more cores and about 20% more clock speed. This is the best CPU you can stick into a Mac Pro 5,1. The GPU will just be radically better with the 6600 XT. As mentioned before, the total price was all of $225, with the goal of this upgrade being 1080p gaming in Windows 10. Oh, <laughs> if you're wondering what's up with the B roll, this is my brother's cidery, Band and Rain Unique Craft Ciders. It's the first and now only coastal Oregon cidery. If you're a longtime watcher, you probably noticed I love craft beer, and this is part of it. If you happen to be visiting the southern Oregon coast, it's a stunningly beautiful area, and I'd highly recommend stopping by if you like cider or local craft beer, or Amazing Age Cheddar, as it's located next to the award-winning Face Rock Creamery. Alright, I know you're here for the Mac Pro stuff, so enough of that. Using one of the more modern 6000 series AMD GPUs in a Mac Pro 5,1 isn't straightforward. If you stick one of these GPUs in a classic Mac Pro, it will not boot. This is because when the firmware is initialized on the GPU, it makes an AVX call, which the CPU does not support. The workaround is to flash the GPU with a patched ROM, but the catch is, it requires a computer that supports AVX so it can boot with the card installed. Generally, any computer with a CPU newer than 2013 will do, and of course, it needs a PCIe slot and Windows. My Mac Pro 2019 just happens to meet all these requirements, so I carded it with me. The credit for the ROM patch goes entirely to the famed Mac hacker, Syncretic. You can find the posts and files on Mac Rumors, and it's linked in the description of this video. If you're looking for a complete guide on how to flash the GPU, Lance and Mac Sound Solutions has a great tutorial. In fact, I referenced it while making this video. Getting the GPU to work was a bit of a bumpy experience. I successfully flashed the card with the ROM using AMD VB Flash and Syncretic's pre-patched ROM only to find that it wouldn't work in the Mac Pro 5,1. In the Syncretic post, he has a list of ROMs that you can download, pre-patched, and the utility he used to make them. For some reason, on my copy of Windows on my Mac Pro 2019, it refused to run. To get around the lack of video output, we plugged in a second GPU into the Mac Pro 5,1. I downloaded a different version of the ROM for the GPU off Tech Power Up, then I ran it through the ROM flasher, then AMD VB Flash. We couldn't install the AMD Adrenaline drivers with two AMD GPUs installed. However, Windows did magically install the basic drivers for the card. Once that happened, both GPUs were outputting a picture. After that, we were able to yank the old GPU and fully install the adrenaline drivers. The next step was the CPU upgrade, and this is a lot more straightforward. There's plenty of tutorials out there, and most of them are good. The only special tool you'll need is a long 3mm hex wrench, and these can be found at Amazon.com or your local hardware store, usually for about $5 to $7. The CPU tray design found in the 5,1 makes CPU replacements about as easy as you'll ever find. Unfasten the CPU and make note of how many rotations it takes to remove the heatsink. To unfasten the CPU screw, it took about an average of 8 full turns. It's important to note this as you do not want to over tighten the CPU heatsink when you reattach it as you can break the mounts. With the heatsink off, it's now time to clean off the old thermal paste with isopropyl alcohol and a cloth. Then finally, the controversial part of this whole process, applying thermal paste. Among PC enthusiasts, the thermal paste application pattern is easily one of the most contested things you can do on a computer. My brother opted for a classic X pattern. It is inevitable in the comments that someone's going to take issue with this application pattern and then someone else will chime in in the comments why they're wrong. Now it's time to replace the heatsink. Again, do not over tighten the screws. We went with 7.5 rotations to be safe, 
Two of the screws met resistance around 7, so we did not tighten those ones further. We didn't bother comparing the 6600 XT to the GeForce 1060 as it's just not super interesting. It's already roughly twice as fast. Instead, we decided for something more interesting, comparing the old CPU to the new CPU in Grand Theft Auto V, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Lord of the Rings Shadow of War. Also in some of these benchmarks out of the Mac Pro 2019 peppered in with the 6600 XT and 6900 XT. There's some important things to consider here. The Mac Pro 2019 has the highest clock speed at 3.5 GHz and also the highest core count at 8. On top of that, it also has PCI 3.0 and a much faster bus. For those who are less familiar with PC gaming benchmarks, generally if you crank the resolution or the detail, it becomes more GPU dependent than CPU dependent. In the game Shadow of War, we can see that there's much more uplift between the two Mac Pro 5,1 CPUs versus the 7,1. The same exact trend can be seen in Red Dead Redemption 2. In fact, there's only a 4 frames per second difference between the Mac Pro 7,1 and the 5,1. Of the three games that we tested, Grand Theft Auto 5 was the only game that the Mac Pro 2019 had a bigger performance gain than upgrading the Mac Pro 5,1 from the 4-core to the 6-core CPU. This might sound counterintuitive, but the Mac Pro 5,1 is almost certainly a much, much, much better 4K gaming device than it is a 1080p high frame rate gaming device. That is given you put in a much better GPU. More frames per second equals more CPU calculations per second, way more so than upscaling the resolution. 120Hz gamers should look elsewhere, but 60Hz gamers are still in luck with the Mac Pro 5,1. Granted, these are not the newest titles. Also, there are some games that do require require AVX, which this computer does not support. What I'm trying to say is your mileage will vary. Overall, I'd declare this upgrade a resounding success. My brother's desire was to play modernish PC games with his 60Hz 1080p displays at high visual fidelity. Even in 2024, the Mac Pro 5,1 is still able to be a quality budget PC, and he couldn't have spent $225 to get a better gaming experience. Eventually, there will be a follow-up video as he can still add NVMe, and we need to get OpenCore up and running on his system. Thank you for watching this video to the end, and a special thank you to my Patreon members. You guys are very appreciated.